Hey there, Dr. Joel Rosen, the Adrenal Fatigue Recovery Ninja. Today I want to talk to you about neurotransmitters and stress. I see a lot of people that are dealing with anxiety, overwhelm, being stressed out, not being able to calm down, having depression, even suicidal thoughts, um, being put on different types of medications, um, knowing that there's a genetic component to it, and they're really confused because they're really suffering, they're they're trying to get their lives back and they're in overwhelm. They can't turn it off. So today I wanted to talk to you about how neurotransmitters and stress are related as it, comp as it relates to glutamate versus GABA. So glutamate is, is the excitotoxin part of the, or excitotoxicity can happen if you have too high glutamate levels, but it's the ex excitability of our body, our ability to mount a stress response, our ability to learn, our ability for memory, it's essential, but in life we need to have balance. If we have too much of something and not a much, uh, as, uh, enough of something else, or we have too much of something else and not enough of something, then we have big problems. And I do a lot of genetic test interpretations as it relates to the monoamines. So the monoamines are things like serotonin, feeling calm, feeling, being able to sleep, having contentment, um, and then um, the other monoamines are um, adrenaline and dopamine to be able to mount a stress response in terms of adrenaline and pl pleasure and pain. But one thing I want you to realize that I didn't really realize until myself, until I did some research on this, is that the, the glutamates and the GABA system are responsible for 50%, 5-0% of the uh, synapses in the, in the brain, whereas the monoamines are responsible for 5%. So if you have, there's different theories on neurotransmitters and chemicals and, and medications, so you have a lot of the SSRIs or the, SSN, or the SNRIs, so things that allow uh, serotonin to hang out longer or things that allow noradrenaline to hang out longer. And these are usually used for depression, anxieties, um, even pain. But you gotta realize that's 5% of what's going on in the brain. Whereas glutamate and, glutam and GABA are, are 50%. So the first thing I wanna talk to you about is where do we get glutamate over, over exposure from the environment? And that's typically gonna be neurotoxins, artificial stuff ubiquitous in all our foods. So you have to really, really, really be vigilant and become the artificial and even natural flavor police. Meaning, if you think that you're going on a diet soda because you're losing weight, uh, or you want to lose weight, but then you go on aspartame, they don't have so much aspartame, but they have NutraSweet and Sweet and Low and all of these artificial sweeteners that say they don't give you any calories, which your body doesn't know how to recognize, but it creates glutamate. Uh, toxicity and that will overstimulate you and that's going to cause problems. Glutamate also is when it becomes dysfunctional we have huge huge problems things like Alzheimer's, things like ALS, Huntington's disease but on a, on a smaller scale which is just as devastating is the anxieties and the depressions so it's really really important to understand that and what happens is when glutamate is is high it's going to upregulate your HPA axis. And that's where the adrenals come in. That's where cortisol comes in. That's where adrenaline comes in. And that's good in short bursts, but it's not meant to be in an environmentally toxic um, society that we live in. Um, a couple of things that you can look at is if you're magnesium deficient, magnesium deficiency is going to cause an overstimulation of the glutamate receptors which are the NMDA receptors, a little scientific -y for you, but that's gonna cause, again, overwhelm. And here what may be happening is you may be taking the GABA supporting nutrients that help the GABA stay in the system a little bit longer, like the um, benzodiazepines or the gabapentins, but the problem is in too much excitotoxicity, not so much in too little GABA. I mean, yes, too little GABA, but the problem is you're making too much glutamate. Not so much that GABA isn't hanging around longer. I mean, yes, it isn't there, so you wanna get more shelf life out of the GABA that isn't being made. 
but you want to focus on the glutamate side of things. Wouldn't it make sense that you don't put a bucket underneath a, a leak, you fix the leak. And that's the equivalent of, of taking a lot of these anti-anxiety medications that focus just on the, um, the GABA side of things. Or they focus on the monoamine side of things, which is the serotonin, the dopamine, and the adrenaline, which that's only responsible for 5% of what's going on in the brain. So focus your time on saving dollars versus saving pennies. It's really, really important. Um, the other thing I want you to talk about is on the GABA side of things. So when we look at your genetics, there are a lot of polymorphisms or things that are in the environment that don't let, allow your, your GABA to be produced from glutamate. And there's an enzyme called glutamate, um, glutamic acid decarboxylase. And that's what converts glutamine, glutamate into GABA. And I see that be a huge, huge um, susceptibility in, in the environment. So if you're doing all these things that we talked about in terms of um, under high stress, um, getting a lot of neurotoxic um, influences from your diet and from the environment, and you have magnesium and zinc deficiencies, and maybe even omega fatty acid deficiencies, that's going to cause more stimulation of your NMDA receptors and we're going to be overwhelmed. On top of that, your GAD SNPs aren't gonna allow that to convert into GABA, and you're focusing on SNRIs, which are not hugely making a, a, a big impact. Um, so GAD SNPs are important though, they really are. Um, the other thing that GAB does, it's inhibitory. So what GABA does is inhibitory, so it calms us down. Um, decreased levels of GABA are associated with depression and anxiety, so again, the benzodiazepines and the gabapentins, they can really help support that. But I would ask the question, is there too much glutamate already? Um, foods that are fermented, kimchi, sauerkraut, have been shown to be really, really helpful in the preservation of GABA. And then also we wanna make sure that we help with our brain waves. If we have a lot of beta wavelengths where we're stressed out all the time, um, and we're in that fight or flight mechanism, we want to get more alpha wavelengths. And that's where we're more focused, we're more concentrated, and that has a lot to do with your mindset and the way that you focus, and even brain retraining can be super, super helpful for you. So I just wanted to sort of get some light bulbs to go off for you and say, are you in the wrong arena if you're anxious and depressed? Are you focusing on, if you're highly stressed out, are you focusing more on the, the monoamine side of things, which is only responsible for 5% of the synapses in the brain? Or are you focusing on the 50%? Are you focusing, if you are on the 50%, are you focusing on the too little of GABA and holding it around longer? Or are you focusing on maybe the major leak, which is where there's too much glutamate? And, and I hope a lot of light bulbs go off. If you have any questions, please let me know. I love to answer them. I wanna make sure that you have the best 2019 ever. I wanna make sure that you're not just trying to medicate and or supplement yourself to good health, because it's not gonna work. Um, and lastly, I wanna end your, your adrenal, what I call your adrenal fatigue nightmare. So my name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I am the Adrenal Fatigue Recovery Ninja, and I look forward to ending your adrenal fatigue nightmare. Thank you so much.